Hey, what's going on my party people? Welcome back to some more math here. And before I start the problem, I want you guys to take a look here. This is on least common multiple. So go ahead, pause the video, give yourself a chance to solve these problems. And we're gonna go over the solutions right now. All right, what is the least common multiple between eight and 20? So here's what least common multiple means. Least common multiple means, hey, at which multiple of eight and 20 are they the same? So better yet, let's just go ahead and draw it out and illustrate it. So let's write out the multiples of eight. So we have eight, then we have 16, that's times two, times three is 24, times four is 32, times five is 40. And we can stop right here at 40. I'll continue on for another couple of iterations here because I wanna show you why it's called least common multiple. 72 and 80, sorry that seven got messed up right there, no worries, and I'll stop at 80. 20, let's write those multiples. All right, 20, then 40, then 60, then 80, then 100, and we can just keep going forever, right? So here's why it's called least common multiple. The thing is, two numbers will have a trillion, billion, infinitely many amount of common multiples because look eight and 20 they meet up at 40 they also meet up at 80 they'll meet up again at 120 160 200 240 every 40 numbers they will meet up so what i'm saying is again they're saying least common multiple because it's the smallest multiple that these numbers will meet at that's the reason okay so boom 40 would be the answer there, and that's one way that you can compute least common multiple. Now here in the next question, what is the least common multiple between 14 and six? I'm gonna show you a different way to compute least common multiple, and it's by using their factors to your advantage. So watch this. I'm gonna write out the factors of 14. The factors of 14 are two times seven, right? And six is two times three. So what do you notice about 14 and six in terms of their factors. Like what's, what do they have in common? And hopefully right now we should be thinking about those twos. And that is correct, a thousand percent. Now, to find the least common multiple, you essentially have to look at the factors that aren't in common, the things that they don't share, and you're gonna have to share them. So here's an example. I see that 14 has two and seven, but it doesn't have that three right there. So the least common multiple would be two times seven times three. Another way you could think about it with the six, you could say, hey, what does the six have that, or what does the 14 have that six doesn't? Again, we have that two in common. It has a three, but it doesn't have that seven right there. So again, if we wanted to, we could multiply this by seven here to get that least common multiple. So to show it, what's two times three, that's six, we know that. But if we multiply it by seven, that'll give us 42. 42 is the least common multiple between 14 and six. Let me prove it. So I'll write out the multiples of six. We have 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, and 42. The multiples of 14, this is less obvious because again, it's beyond 12, so not everybody knows their times tables up to 20, but that's okay. 14, then 28, then 42. Look at that. There's your least common multiple. So I just showed you strategy number two, and it's by using the factors to your advantage. All right, so let's look at number three here. Again, go ahead and take a quick pause on this video if you want to try this one out on your own with the knowledge you have now, and then press play when you're ready. So what is the least common multiple between four, five, and six? So when you have three numbers here, you can go either way. You can write out all three multiples, but the thing is the more numbers you have, guess what? The harder it's gonna be to find that least common multiple by hand. And that's why I don't like to work by hand. Look at all that work I put in there versus this versus that, you know, I think that we should like this method better by writing the factors out and then just seeing what's not shared. Easy does it. So let's write out the factors of four. That's two times two. Five is, well, that's just five. And then six, that's two times three. So here's how it works. Well, I'm looking at the four and I'm asking myself, well, what is the four missing from everything else? Well, I know that we have a shared two there, 
but that's pretty much it. So with that said, I'm going to want to take this 5 and this 3 and multiply them both in there with the 4. That'll get me my least common multiple. It's that easy, guys. So 2 times 2 times 5 times 3. That would be our answer. And so 2 times 2 times 5 times 3, that's 4 times 5 times 3, or 20 times 3, or 60. And boom, there it is. It's 60. And if you don't believe me, well, you should. But if you don't, again, I don't want you guys to feel like you need to trust everything I say. So prove it to yourself. Go ahead, grab 4, 5, and 6, and really outline those multiples and see where they meet up. I guarantee you, it'll be 60. But regardless, guys, so now that we're here at the end of the problem, I really want to take a moment to just express how important it is to know more than one way to complete the same type of problem. Because I remember back in school, when I was in middle school and high school, I was taught mostly in just one way. And that method was all I used all throughout. But what you really need to do to be successful on the ASVAB is make sure that you know the quickest way, not just a guaranteed one way. It's about speed and accuracy, not just accuracy. So with that said, my party people, keep looking out for more content, more YouTube videos, and go ahead and make sure to stay up to date in our Facebook group. Again, if you search ASVAB Help Group, raise your score, you will find this group where we have hundreds of people just like you preparing to take the ASVAB and ready to lock in and get it done. So you guys have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.